You're listening to the GC Collaborative Podcast, a resource for the worship arts team at Grace Church. All right, All everybody. Right, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. To the, to the GC Collaborative Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> this is a new intro. Yeah. Awesome. We love it. That was great. Let's let's play that every time. <laughs> no. We don't even need to do that every time. Let's just I play that. <laughs> a thousand... I've, I've, <laughs> Tens of people just hit stop <laughs> tens, on tens this of podcast. On this oh my gosh. Episode. They're like, well, we tried. <laughs> uh, never mind. We'll wait till next month. But in all seriousness, welcome, guys, to this month. This is the December podcast for the GC Collaborative Podcast. Ooh, and Merry we Christmas. are so excited. So we do not have a podcast in January mm. throughout the year just because we want you guys to be able to celebrate New Year's, not worry about us. Yeah, it's like all we about know them. you would. Yeah. It's and, all about uh, them. We want you to just enjoy New Year's with your yeah, family. Right. Not have to listen to this podcast. It's not because we're so super busy and really don't have time to sit down and, and do a podcast. Oh, wow. I never actually no. thought about that. I like how you twisted that yeah. into huh. making it more noble yeah. for us. <laughs> like we're giving you guys a break from listening to this. Yeah. Goal. Well, what are you talking about in January? You know, Christmas happened. Yay. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. New Year's resolutions. Oh, yeah. Well, we know how well those go. Yeah, we'll be right. crying in June. Skip it. Okay. So we said in December. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so this month we have uh, exciting podcasts with two yeah. of, well, they are the brothers mm-hmm. of the band, Brothers McClurg, Chris and Anthony, and we got to sit down with them, and it was exciting because this was our very first podcast where not everybody was in the room. Yep. So we had to do some technology things. That was exciting. Mm. Try some stuff. We don't even know if we recorded them, actually, <laughs> so we'll find <laughs> out. It might yet. just be me and Ben talking <laughs> back and forth to nobody, um, but we're going to find that out pretty yeah. quickly. But no, it was an awesome conversation. Got to sit with them, pick their brains about artistry, being who God's created you to yeah. be. Hearing their story. Hearing their story. Yeah. And, and for people that, uh, for those of you that don't aren't aware that um, Brothers McClurg have a connection to Grace... Over the past five years or so, they uh, they have led worship on on a couple of weekends uh, at the South Overland Park campus uh, when that was the only campus we had, mm-hmm. um, and they did they were just awesome. They were such a, a blessing to our church at the time, and I've, I've recently been getting people asking for them to come back. Uh, but they also the second time they came, they spent um, an evening with our worship ministry, mm-hmm. kind of encouraging uh, the team, and uh, it was an awesome, just a great yeah. time. So They're the real deal. Yeah, they really are. It's pretty awesome. Really... So this was a, a great interview, just hearing their story, um, how they got started, and hearing their um, their heart and their philosophy for how they approach their songwriting and um, their record company, um, their yeah. publishing company. And just sure. creative decisions as well. Yep. So it was a really great podcast, and so we're excited for you guys to hear it. So check it out. Well, guys, thanks so much for being here. Chris and Anthony Hoisington are with us. Woo. Yes, from the Woo. Brothers McClurg mm. and mm. Old Bear Records. Yeah. So thank you both right. for being here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Oh, thanks for having us. Thanks for having. Yeah, thanks for having us for sure. Yeah, Luke and I were talking. Um, I think it was a few days ago. We were mentioning um, how it's been already a year. For us, we we came to you guys and asked, hey, would you guys be open to putting together some online worship experiences for our church services online? And you guys were gracious enough to, I think you did like three, yeah, three sets, sets for us. One of them included a Christmas uh, mm. set. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can't believe that it was a year ago already. Good grief. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's flown by. Oh. It, you, it, it has. It has. <laughs> yeah. So um, we had some uh, some great. Uh, those were just great worship times for us uh, mm-hmm. online, and we're going to actually uh, use the Christmas one again here in a few weeks for mm-hmm. our online service. Cool. So yeah, that's good. Um, they're very reusable. Yeah. So uh, those, we really. That's right. Those sweet hearts. They're still, re- still relevant. Yeah, <laughs> still, relevant. Still, relevant. <laughs> still relevant. Those renditions still hit. You know. <laughs> you know. I keep saying that every year. So this Christmas song is still relevant. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Is that? <laughs> Yeah, we gotta sing. We have to sing "Silent Night" again, or yeah. oh, geez. it's a given. You can't, you can't not. Uh, but we're we're excited you're here to to talk to us and uh, just appreciate appreciate you guys very much taking time um, out of your schedules to just share with our folks um, your guys' story and um, you you kind of have a connection to Grace Church with us um, over the past five or six years or so. Mm-hmm. I know. Um, I want to say it was mm-hmm. 2016 or so. I don't know if you guys remember. I know you guys travel a lot and go to a bazillion churches, and but you guys came in 2016 and had a tremendous impact on 
both our worship team and our services in general. Um, we loved having you and uh, appreciated you guys very much coming. Uh, that do you guys mm. remember that when you guys came? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, was good. I don't know what I don't remember what year it was, but yeah. I do remember it being uh, yeah, just an enjoyable time. And anytime we come, it's been a lot of fun just kind of hanging out and uh, you know being part of it. It's easy to slide in when things are well done, you know. Yeah. So. Um, oh, I like that. Thank you. you. That's yeah, awesome. That's no, you're welcome. That's I do, compliment. and I do remember yeah. we introduced you to something that you probably aren't familiar with, but we took you to um, to a place to get some buffalo wings, mm. and we. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were like, "Do you guys? Yes. Do you guys eat buffalo wings? Do you know of these?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was at the peanut uh and yeah. we, we joke about that because you guys are right where are you guys located at why don't you tell our, our our folks where you guys are at so we're both we're both about 40 40 minutes or so just outside of buffalo um yeah like the city so yeah buffalo wings are really uh a staple i mean i have a group of guys that meets once a month um at this this wing place called duff's Mm -hmm. and uh we just gather together and and eat as many wings as we possibly can and uh (laughs) have a good time but yeah so it is it is a tradition for us for sure around here good wings yeah but you don't call them buffalo wings up there i learned that going up there with you guys you get looked at like you (laughs) got something wrong oh yeah just call them wings right Yep. Yeah, chicken I mean wings. it's kind of, it's kind of re- it's kind of redundant if you say I That's want some true. buffalo buffalo chicken yeah. wings. You Dude, know, my yeah. mind is just blown. Yeah, I, I know, I mine was too. It's just <laughs> the things you don't realize we until could you're there. Probably in this podcast right now with the, all the depth <laughs> that we just got. I got to process I, this for like a week, guys. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, so could you guys just kind of kind of talk through? And you might you might say who you are uh, because sometimes it could be confusing for guys uh, for us hearing who's talking. But mm-hmm. if you could maybe um, share your guys' journey and your your walk into because you guys are both brothers, um, your yep. your journey into worship leadership with music, like how you know how the musical journey started for you both. And uh, how you landed where you're at right now? Take it away, man. All right. Well, uh, so this is Anthony, and uh, for me, and I think a lot. Like, I think my brother and I, we kind of have parallel stories uh, as far as how we started doing youth or started doing worship ministry it was uh, kind of in our <clears throat> in our in our youth group uh growing up um you know i always think about like the (laughs) uh, so my dad was the drummer in the youth worship band um and so they would let me come to youth group you know at like you know i think our age i think the age was like 12 you know you had to be 12 um but i started going to youth group with my dad when i was 10 because um you know i i could play like i I would just kind of sit behind the drums and play like a shaker or uh, like a tambourine back when tambourines were still kind of cool. And, um, uh, to make and come back. you know, yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Seriously. Come. Uh, and so, and then it kind of progressed from there, you know, like I bought like a set of, uh, of bongos and uh, Congo congas. And then, some timbales and wind chimes. This was like right around the time that Ron Canoli did the, the, uh, he did like, a, Ron Canoli is an old worship mm-hmm. leader. Uh, he did name. something like, yeah, he did, he did something with like some kind of like, you know, Latin sound and had a bunch of things going on. And so I thought it was really <clears> cool. And, and I think back now and I think like the, the worship leader that led the youth group for a while was like probably in his 30s at the time and he probably really cared a lot about like i I mean i remember when i first started in worship ministry at like my first church i really cared a lot about like what everybody was playing and doing i I still do a little bit but it was like i just had this i would have never let a little kid show up with timbales and just start (laughs) like wailing away you know yeah yeah but but the but this but this guy I don't know if it's because he really needed my dad to play drums and we were kind of like a package deal yeah. or 
Or if he saw, if he saw like, uh, you know, like this is a little kid and it's probably a good thing, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, but he, he let me do it forever. And, um, and then finally, uh, you know, when, when Chris and I kind of got even older and we were, you know, actually there, I guess, according to the church legally, you know, we, um, you know, we started kind of, kind of volunteering for our, our, our youth, you know, worth our youth worship team and, and then started leading it eventually, you know, junior, senior year started kind of leading the charge. And, um, then we did our college ministry for a while and that's kind of where it kind of began for us. Like Chris and I, I mean, we played in bands together growing up, um, you know, that I guess were like Christian bands, but we, we always kind of felt like worship music when we were younger musicians were, at least I'll speak for myself, was just sort of like a cop-out type of music, you know, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, we, we, we kind of wanted to do like, you know, rock music and, and, you know, things that just didn't sound like Ron Cannoli, <laughs> you know, like it sounded <laughs> differently. I gotta look that guy up. I don't uh, even know who that is. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he wrote the song, he wrote the song Ancient of Days. I don't know if you remember that song. But oh, I love it, that song. That's a great yeah, song. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was that was the big that was a big that was a smash hit in our ch- in our local yeah. church. You want to hear um, a little uh, fun little side story real fast about Ancient of Days? Sure. <laughs> so yeah, I'd love to. We made this. I, I, I'll say masterful medley because I did not make it. It was really. masterful. Yeah. Uh, a volunteer made it of songs through the ages of Grace Church. Um, we were celebrating our 25th. 25th anniversary. anniversary. Made this medley. Mm-hmm. Uh, a volunteer did. It was beautiful. He asked me for songs. I got a list of songs. Um, so we put Ancient of Days in this, in this medley. It wasn't on the list, but I was just like, who didn't do Ancient of Days when it came out? You know, and right. just assumed right. that everybody across America played that song. Well, we do the medley and come to find out. Ancient of Days was never done at Grace Church, so all I get all weekend is, oh, that medley was beautiful, but we never did Ancient of Days here. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. I was like, who didn't do Blessing and Nana Glow? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you asked that question, who didn't do it? I'm raising my hand. I'm like, uh, we didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, no. it's okay. It's it was just, okay. Fun. Well, yeah, I mean, the only churches that didn't do it are clearly not... <laughs> really christian churches Probably so it's not. you know it's, well i didn't well. want to say it out loud but the thought did cross my mind <laughs> well we were you know and thank and and i would say this i would say this luke thank god you're there uh, you know just to be able to yeah just be in a light luke yeah. means light you know i mean <laughs> finally finally grace church is in compliance with the lord you know so Finally my played mother. that 30-year-old song. Yeah, my mother would be so proud. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's right. Uh, well, we weren't, let's just your be mother. Clear, we weren't a Christian church. We were an old Baptist church. So. Ah. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm just kidding. Right. Back just on to kidding. the life story. 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 Ron kidding. Cannoli. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, then, then, then uh, in, when we kind of graduated from the youth group and started doing college ministry was really when uh you know uh, we started playing we we started this this college ministry at our church with my dad my dad didn't he's not a past like an ordained pastor or anything he just was like i got keys to the building and, and uh you know uh why don't you get all your friends and we'll have like a group for them you know he, he and he sounded and he sounded that miserable about it too no i'm just kidding um, <laughs> but it really was predominantly a time for us to like gather together and just kind of worship and in those long extended times we started you know getting tired of of uh the worship songs that we were playing all the time and decided, Hey, you know, we, we're writing songs all the time. Why don't we start to write some songs, uh, for our group? And, uh, and that's, you know, I look back on that time and I think that was a real kind of formative moment mm-hmm. for us. Just kind of, kind of, I, you know, it was a, it was a, a real exploration of not only music, but just our spiritual lives and trying to figure out like where do we fit because Mm -hmm. i think um 
you know, that we were kind of like, well, now, now we're out of high school and, and what are we going to do with our lives? And, <laughs> and again, just kind of wrestling with the idea that are we going to be worship leaders? You know, are we going to do music that where we work at churches? Are we going to, uh, play music, uh, do both? Like how, how do we, you know, kind of marry the two together? And so from there, it just kind of progressed and, uh, we also had a pretty um, extensive like outreach ministry to our local community. There's a like a concert series in the su- in the summers that are free for the community, and um, you know thousands of people come down and they you know they watch the bands play, and there's all kinds of you know food and all that stuff. And uh, we used to go to it because we were you know like we were into music and we would like to just go see some of the bands that were playing and while we were there i don't remember who but someone in our group kind of identified that there were all these teenagers that were not really doing anything like the the music was like kind of just old enough where they just weren't really interested and Mm -hmm. uh so someone in our group uh was like we should do something to like occupy these kids you know it'd be kind of fun and and so um started with just kind of like bringing like chalk down and uh started to like just do this like chalk art like extensive chalk art so we had some artists in our in our college group and it just started like doing some like really crazy cool looking things and then these kids would all like want to do you know start drawing on the on the sidewalk and then conversations would happen and they would came back and and somebody had an idea like as it progressed like we should we should do this and like also like maybe there was a there was a pizza shop right on the corner and um maybe we should like just get like get a pizza you know and have it for them and Mm. we'll just like let them eat some pizza and because you know there was some it's in the city so there were some kids that you know obviously had it rough and maybe were hungry like legit hungry Mm. so uh kind of progressed to where we were able to like get a like um, a budget line at our church for it to oh, be nice. able to like uh, pay for pizza. And it got, it, that's kind of when it, it kind of got crazy because we went, <laughs> we went from like, you know, connecting with like 15, 20 teenagers to like hundreds of teenagers every Thursday oh, would wow. come out and have like, want to have pizza, you know, cause it was free pizza. Yeah. So, and it got to the point where the pizza shop was like, you guys really can't have it here anymore. It was a, it was a two story pizza shop that could oh, hold wow. about a hundred people that, that could hold about a hundred people full. And we were filling it up with teenagers that just were hanging out, you know? Yeah. So finally they're like, we love, we love being able to obviously serve the pizza. And they started like donating some of it. Cause we couldn't <laughs> cover all the pizza we needed. And then we got people from other church, like other churches to get involved and help us out and and anyways at these there was a local christian center like just down the street from there and we started going there and um it just got it got it kind of got crazy and it was really cool because it wasn't um really wasn't franchised by any church and it wasn't you know like we were just a bunch of of young adults that really didn't know even how to organize our own lives, let alone, you know, ha- have, have a program for teenagers. And so we started playing music at that too, at those events. Mm. And from there we, you know, started recording. And then through that whole process, actually, uh, we were playing at a local music festival and, and a friend of ours who worked for integrity records, um, was there and he kind of heard about us and came to check out our, stuff her songs our our worship time and he's like oh we're you know this was great but it actually didn't happen right away i mean it took us three years to decide uh both sides whether you know it was the right fit for us to sign with them and vice versa whether they wanted to sign us oh wow they had people they had people fly up to uh come to the thursday night outreach stuff that we were doing and just be a part of it i mean they were really scoping out like what is going on with this thing and um yeah so that's kind of where it started and about three years later we 
we signed a contract with them. We recorded a few projects and that kind of is really where it, you know, set us, you know, into the, into the life that we're doing now, you know, just kind of playing music and stuff like that. So, so it's a long guys, story, but that's it. Yeah. So are you guys, do you guys um, like serve at a church or, or what does worship leadership for you look like with regard to like local church stuff? How does that fit into what you guys do on the regular? So I, I mean, for, this is Chris. For yeah. the last, I was working at a church uh, leading worship. I worked at a couple different, um, I worked at three different churches since my mid 20s. Uh, I worked at a <clears throat> fairly large Wesleyan church, and then I worked at a Presbyterian church in the city, and then I worked at a Free Methodist church. So it was like a lot of different yeah. denominations and stuff. Um, that's some diverse background let, stuff. Quick yeah, question yeah. about that. Did any of them yeah. ever play Ancient of Days? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good would, you say, would you say all of them probably did? <laughs> Whatever. I don't I can't imagine the Presbyterian uh. Church did. Um, <laughs> I don't know if the Free Me- I'm sure maybe the Free Methods were, were they even around in, in that time. <laughs> uh, uh, um, Anyways, I'm sorry. <clears throat> But yeah, so I, so I worked at, you know, kind of three different experience, experiences in those times of like um, varied. I mean, the Presbyterian Church was like a Sunday night thing that I was doing in the city. And that that grew to about maybe 80 or 90 people that mm-hmm. would come out and we would do like a meal. And that's actually where our video, You Shine Through, is shot in the sanctuary of that oh, church. Nice. It's like a really old Presbyterian church and... Um, what was cool about that church was we th- we kind of flipped it on its head and said, and it's not we're not the first to do it. Obviously, a lot of churches do this as well. But um, I had started encouraging other artists to write their own music, and we basically just did all original stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was like, and we would encourage the other writers to write their own stuff and kind of bring it to the meeting. Um, People would do artwork. We did a bunch of art shows. We would do these jazz night outreach things where oh, we nice. would bring in the jazz band group, a uh, friend of ours, and they would just, it was it was a cool time. And for me, that's kind of where um, the join in the sound period was for me. But also, um, it was just cool to see, you know, other uh, musicians come in and then start writing their own music as well, you know, mm-hmm. writing what was kind of, and it was just, kind of an outsider group so there was really no a lot of them wouldn't even have known the difference between hill song and bethel you know i mean yeah. they're just people off the off the street so they know like amazing grace they know those christmas songs that we came to, we still keep singing every year uh yeah. they're not still relevant um but yeah that was that was a cool time for me so up to now you know when covid hit i was working at a church in canada so I'd go over the border into Canada because we're about 20 minutes from the border uh, hmm. where we live, right by Niagara Falls. So obviously when COVID hit, I was pretty involved there. And then when COVID hit, I wasn't able to, to go at all. So it went from that to not really, as all of us were, kind of out of the church building for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now the last year, I've kind of gotten back into doing stuff at a church in uh allegheny which is a free methodist church uh i do stuff there like twice a month and then usually the band you know is traveling a week a month that kind of thing so (laughs) i haven't been full-time or whatever and it's been a lot of years for me you know Mm -hmm. so now i have a question for you guys because um i always love seeing you guys play because one you have a very just unique sound of the melodies and the the harmonies and then obviously just being brothers and and the whole team you guys just fit so well together Um, but the craziest thing that i love about seeing you guys sing and play is there's something about it that just feels so like i whenever i talk to people about you guys it's like it just feels so natural like it almost just seems like you guys are breathing up there like you're not even like having to think about anything it just kind of happens naturally and and even on the videos you guys sent it's like it just all just it just seems so like 
like it's just you, you know? <laughs> and, um, mm-hmm. uh, and so my question is with that is, uh, what got you to that place where like, I mean, was it like kind of working hard at it or was it, you just kind of started writing and singing and it kind of just naturally happened or, or how did you guys kind of get to that spot? I, th- I think the I think the configuration that you've probably seen in the last four or five years is, I think we're kind of at a we are we are at a point in our lives where you know your twenties you kind of you work at being in a band or a songwriter but you're not really doing it as your your livelihood you know mm-hmm. you kind of get into your thirties and you you start to realize so maybe I'm enough people have told me I'm good at this I think I could try my hand at it and I think kind of where Brothers McClurg has been the last four or five years is kind of just playing with people who you kind of know that I wouldn't say this is what they're born to do, but it's pretty close to that. Mm-hmm. Like they're just, you know, like Jeremy's super gifted on the guitar. And I don't, I, I don't know. There's very few people in my life I've ever seen as like naturally good at the guitar as he is. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we just did a recording in Nashville where we had a banjo player of Allison Cross and Union Station sat in on a track and, you know, he was hanging with them the whole time. Like, mm. like they, you know, that level of a player. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. You know, and, you know, Anth, he's not that great of a singer, but, you know, we, we <laughs> decided to... <laughs> so... It's, it's better to have him in the band than have awkward family Christmases yeah. for the rest of your life. You yeah. Know? Well, somebody, somebody's got... Yeah, well, somebody's got to drive and make sure, you know... <laughs> We still let him bang on a tambourine in the background. <laughs> That's right. That's Bring right. Bongo's out. Do, 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 do. <laughs> hey guys, check Here this he out. Go. Here he goes again, <laughs> bringing his bongos. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh I was going to say too, like on the, on the tail end of what we're talking about about it being natural. I also think in our songwriting, we've gotten to a place where, um, you know, I think there's like this when when honesty and like, you know, honesty comes out in, in music, I always feel like it helps connect you to God. Like mm. it's, to me, when people are being honest, if it, there's just something about the vulnerability, you know, like when a pastor just stops his sermon and is just like, I just gotta be real with you guys, you know? I, and all of a sudden everybody who was, was half paying attention is now engaged. But I think for us, like also kind of been in it long enough where, you know, we, kind of write worship songs more as like prayers you know mm-hmm. of how we reflect off the story that we're singing about and now we're now we're about to put out a record that's really mostly like songs about life like mm-hmm. but it still kind of has a spiritual bent you know similar to a sarah groves or, or something of that nature so i mean I, I just think it's kind of led our ministry into a spot where i mean i don't even think I mean, Ant says all the time, like, he doesn't play our songs on Sunday morning when we're not doing Brothers McClurg, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's just kind of become our own blend of ministry, like, that somehow is kind of worship, but it's kind of a prayer. But it's enough where, like, when we travel to even a church like yours, we can even do a little bit of what we do, and it's not like a weird thing, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. loves when you guys play, oh my play gosh. your originals and hear... Yeah. So we need amazing. to bring you guys back. We, I've, I've had people ask about y'all uh, a few times this recently this year. Mm-hmm. We definitely do. Well, and the other cool thing about you guys that I love as well is so you have your record label, Old Bear Records, um, which is amazing. And I think it's really cool because you can see how I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you can see how you guys have kind of struggled or, or maybe dealt with your own sound in a way. Um, and, and kind of come to that peace with this is who we are, this is like who God's made us to be. We create out of that. And then the cool thing is, I think about what you guys do with Old Bear is you do that with all those artists because you have pretty different artists coming in, um, in 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 making records there. And but the cool thing is they all kind of take their own personality. I think of of mm. that artist. So I think the cool thing is is. Not only have you become at peace with that in your own lives, but now you're encouraging that in others. And was and so my question with that is: is was there ever a time where you're like, hey, we should start uh, pouring into maybe other artists, younger artists, or was it just kind of natural, or, or how did you guys get to that point even? I think for us, uh, this is this is Anthony. I think I think. Uh, 
That's a really good question. I think for, for us, it was during the integrity time when we, we were on this major label and, uh, felt like we, I mean, we got signed at the very same time that, um, some other very popular, uh, people that are very popular now, um, got signed, you know, and we, wa- we had to watch them sort of ascend to, like you know going from like we were all it's kind of like the analogy of like we all pulled up in a minivan and they left in a bus you know (laughs) and um and i think for us it was like you know uh, it was it was rather humbling and and i and i think i think we i i get i get asked like once in a while because because i also like um i work at a college and i get asked like by students like well, how did you get a, you know, a record deal? And I said, well, I got one, but I didn't really know what I was doing when it came. And the lesson is, if you don't really know what you want to do, they're going to help you figure that out and quick because they're spending all this money. So, and it may not be on the other side. On the other side, it may not be exactly what you wanted because it happened so fast. And so if you don't have an identity going in, They'll help you find one mm. and it, it'll be tough. So yeah. I think for us, that's kind of what happened. Whereas we're, we, we struggled. We did a few projects where we tried to be, uh, I guess maybe people pleasers, you know, like, well, wh- this is the formula that, that they're good at. And, mm. and maybe they're trying to, and they're going to plug us into this formula and it's going to go, it's going to be awesome. You know, in the reality, I think at the end of the day, I mean, we, we just didn't, we didn't vibe with the formula in our, you know, just exactly the way that, you know, you hear over and over again in tales of other bands, you know, so it's, it just kind of felt like, and so then, you know, at the end of the day, it was a great experience, um, met a lot of great people and didn't really make a whole lot of like waves as far as the industry goes, hmm. but really, uh, began to identify what was important to us along the way. Like, oh, well, that's actually really important. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, and so it's kind of like we we just, we went from the internship to day one, like a, at a job. Uh, and it felt like, you know, it, it was, that was only a week, you know, um, <laughs> worth of time. And so it just, uh, you know, it developed that way. But, but, but I think out of that, we kind of decided here's the things that we want to pay attention to moving forward. And, and that's kind of how the, that's kind of how old bear started was we actually were recording our Christmas record and we needed to, uh, you know, we, we needed to get into a studio to start doing that. So we decided that, um, one idea was we would just do a Kickstarter, raise a bunch of money and then go into the studio or, uh, we would raise a bunch of money, buy our own equipment, and then find a space that we could spend some time in. Mm. So that's kind of what we did. We we signed a year lease in this uh, this warehouse that's uh, down the street from us, and uh, set up a bunch of stuff and kind of made it like a clubhouse. And we spent the year there recording this Christmas thing. And um, and then the the thought was we were just gonna sell all the stuff, give the space back to the warehouse and then, uh, go our way, you know, like then use the money to help promote the record. Cause mm. we, we didn't have a label at that time. And a friend of ours on the West coast who would play at his church a few times called us and he was like, Hey, before you take your studio down, you mind if I come and record uh, my project there? And, uh, we were like, sure. You, you know, you got like a couple of months to do that. So if you want to get here and do it, that's fine. But you know, we're, we're taking it down, you know? And he was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So he came up or came out and did it, did his project. And then, um, around the same time, a couple other friends of ours who later became, um, old bear people did the same thing. And, uh, and we decided to sign another year, you know, it was this, it's like progression. Um, and we, we found that there are people in life that are, you know, that were trying to do music and just couldn't figure out how to do like, what, what are the next steps, you know? Mm, yeah. So we knew a little bit, 
<laughs> more than the rest of the group, I guess, but not much. And there was this uh, group in Nashville that decided to do something similar to this, where it was a collective of uh, of musicians that were all singer songwriters that had no label, um, and they decided that uh, they would. I think it was six of them. If I got the story right, there were six artists, and they got in a room together and they said. When one, when one go, you know, like when one has a victory, we all have a victory together mm. and in this music thing. And so when one person comes out with a project, we're going to, we're going to help that, you know, the other five of us are going to help that one uh, yeah. really make it the very best and kind of get, to, instead of individuals, it really felt like church. Yeah. You know, it felt like this community of, of people that. We're just sort of going to, like, you can stand on my shoulders if I can stand on yours when it comes time, you know? Oh, yeah. So we lo- I, I just, I loved that. I, I resonated with that. And that's kind of when we started Old Bear with the idea that, like, hey, we don't really know a whole lot, but I think we can <laughs> figure it out the, the more people we can, can get together in this room. And, you know, it has its challenges for sure. And, um, you know, not everybody, I'm sure, is, like, super into everybody else's project or even considers it like a, a favorite <laughs> but you know um for the most part that's kind of how we we've been trying to operate even you know even up till today and as things go along then all of a sudden you know people join the group that do have some knowledge hey you know i have done this mm. part of the music business thing yeah and i think i have a little bit of you know knowledge about that and they can bring that to you know it's kind of just a collective of sharing yeah you know ideas and stuff like that so so you guys uh, have you guys yeah. have a new album coming yeah you said recently it's coming out soon it's going to come out next year next year yeah okay. um yeah uh we're we're gonna release a single uh sometime actually in march oh cool so but awesome I, but i think it would be kind of cool to i'll set well i'll send you guys for sure i'll send you guys a link you can you can hear it just don't just don't share it to the masses. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, leaked but, out, leaked out early. You know, if you leak it, you know, that's just going to disappoint millions of fans. So. Well, well, we would never do that. I like it. I like what you said about um, kind of one victory for one of us is a victory yeah. for all of us because I think that's such an important thing. Um, even in the church world, of you know, there can be this sense of competition, and and I think especially the larger the church you have, uh, if you have multiple musicians who do the same thing, um, it can kind of get into the who's the better one, who's the who's the one that maybe gets asked more. Um, and one thing I think I think we try to do here, which I feel like honestly, kind of me even being around you guys a little bit and, and experiencing that has helped me see it too, is the beauty of. Like so many people come with so many different gifts and um, styles, even like drums, bass, guitars, mm-hmm. vocal, and it is that you know, let's all kind of figure out what that is, and then when somebody succeeds, instead of feeling like oh I was beaten, it's the hey that's awesome like you succeeded, we all succeeded in a way which I think is a very powerful way to live life and, and even run a label or, or business even in that regard because it is mm-hmm. it's the we're all working together um, as a label as a worship ministry uh, you know and I know me and Ben always joke about but like he has the voice of I would say maybe nine or ten angels um, now yeah. uh, yes. you know. uh, but you know and it's like so then for any like even for me like to try to sing like Ben would be silly and frivolous um, and vice versa mm-hmm. yeah Right, Ben. Vice uh, absolutely, versa. vice yeah, versa. That's what I thought. No, <laughs> that's well, I think, right. That's uh, true. I definitely think I would agree. I think your guys is uh, what you do with Old Bear Records. I think it it definitely is reflected of that philosophy, just because mm-hmm. the you have such a, a wide, diverse um, group of artists that I've seen um, that mm-hmm. you guys have, have helped support, and it's been it's been really cool. I know um, we all know Luke is so extremely diverse. And um, mm-hmm. unique, unique air quotes. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm like a unicorn. <laughs> he is a unicorn. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. It's awesome. You are a unicorn. Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, but I do want to ask because I think uh, one thing too is is you guys work together in the studio a lot and are brothers. And um, in any situation, there's creative ideas thrown out. 
um, that are, you know, and sometimes there's multiple good creative ideas. It's not even that they're bad ones versus good ones. But how do you guys deal with, like, in the studio? Because, uh, you know, I've been out there and have witnessed it, but I think it's really awesome how you guys go about things where, you know, you have that big room that you're talking about with all the instruments in it. You kind of start a song. People just kind of start. You guys start kind of messing with stuff. Um, Jeremy's in there too, I think, usually, and some other guys. But how do you guys go about just making decisions if there is like two decisions coming at you or, or two ideas coming at you? How do you guys kind of go about making, okay, this is the right call? Is it like a gut feeling? Is it a meeting? Or, or how do you guys go about that? Usually, I, I, usually, yeah. usually at the end of the day, we we get we get really angry. We go home, and then the three of us send text messages back and forth to each other that say, "Maybe we should quit the band." <laughs> <laughs> Passive uh, aggressive artist. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Or I, if we're really if we're really feeling confident, we say, "Maybe you should quit the band." That, that's how we. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but I think. I mean, I think we've dealt with those challenges over the years. I think we're kind of at a point now where nobody really, I, I say this not in a way that's like you don't care, but nobody cares anymore. You know, like you get to a point too where you're like, well, if this guitar part is this way or that way, it's not going to sell any more records because mm-hmm. both ways are kind of good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it, it's weird because the, this hasn't really come out yet. I know they've posted, Ann's posted stuff on social media, but we're doing like a, doing a, like a Rich Mullins, we're doing a version of a bunch of his songs. We got permission to record it in his old house where he used to live before he wow. passed away. And so we've had a bunch of different artists come in to his house where we're set up. It, we're going to, it, it was going to be like a Kickstarter that launches for it early next year, but um, that tells the story of it, but next year is the 25th anniversary of his death when he mm-hmm. died in a car accident. Mm-hmm. So we want to release this record. So we had artists come in like Audrey Assad and um, Taylor Reinhardt and uh, Evan Max from DC Talk did a song. Mm-hmm. Um, the Ron Block from Allison Krauss. Uh, there's a bunch of other artists, but there's other artists like Jason Upton's doing a song. Sarah Groves is doing a song, oh, but nice. it's weird because we're in the reason I'm saying this is because we're in, we're in a place that's not even all there, right? Mm-hmm. We're in, we're in this guy's house with, with, I have this guy named Evan who's engineering everything and mixing it. And then Anthony and Jer ba- basically playing on a, bu- a good majority of the tracks Ants recording interviews with people behind the scenes. I have this guy, Andrew, that's been helping me kind of pe- uh, make all the connections with the artists and all that. But what, as a, what reason I'm saying this is like an artist will go to record a song and it's basically just with a, a guitar and a vocal and like a boom box, hmm. like tape recorder from the nineties. <laughs> um, and uh, the reason we're doing that just, just because you're probably like, why are you doing that with the boombox? Rich Mullins did like a demos album. It got released called the Jesus record where he did a demo version just with a cassette boombox in his old, in a church, <laughs> just sitting at a piano. And I actually loved the way that sounded more than any of his like high production records he did for a hundred grand. It was like all of a sudden I heard the songs for the first time. Mm. So I, that's what my idea was to, why don't we do it the way Rich unintended to do it? Let's yeah. do like kind of a demos um, produced record, but we're actually serious. Like we're doing it at kind of as demos in the production. So like Audrey Assad will go in and push record on the boom box, sit down and play the song two or three times. We take the best take. Wow. So that's, that's where awesome. that comes from. But like what I was saying is like an artist will go to play a song, right? And normally it's it kind of comes down to just whoever is the main producer and everybody else is kind of, Be's quiet, does you know, and goes with whatever he's saying you should do, you know. Mm-hmm. But we get done recording it. Technically, my name is on as the producer, but I got five guys in the room that are all throwing out ideas. Mm. And they're not looking at me to say, what should we do? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm saying that to say it's weird because that's kind of the spirit of Old Bear brought to Nashville. Because mm. normally in that setting, I'll, I'm talking to people later and they're like, I've never recorded like that. It's almost like a community. You're walking into a community where it actually works. You don't have to have like a too many chefs in the kitchen mentality. It somehow seems to work. 
because everybody just respects everybody else and gives, yeah, let's try that idea. Let's see if that works. Or I'm trusting you enough that you know what you're doing. Mm. And so I think when we record records in Buffalo, it's kind of the same way. Yeah. You know, like it's not everybody respects everybody else's ear for music. And so kind of there's just a collective leaving room for that stuff to happen because i believe that there are a lot of artists that are looking to feel like they're in a community not like they just went to nashville and dropped twenty thousand dollars and they 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 met the guitar player because he came in for an hour and recorded five tracks yeah like they're just people that are don't want that experience no oh, yeah you know absolutely. what i'm saying absolutely and they want to they want to mine for the sounds on the record they want to like work with cool harmonies they want to try things um and so I think we just try to carry that wherever we go. Because, like I said, I would talk to artists in Nashville and they'd be like, normally this would be chaos. Mm -hmm. But somehow everything's getting done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, and I think you guys, so, though, are, are that way where you're very, um, at least the times I've been around you, uh, you could just be faking it around me. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you're very, uh, totally joking. You're very... Um, you don't you don't come off no, none of you come across as like i'm i'm always the right one or i'm always the one that right. is the best um you you guys just in your nature are very inclusive and um in just who you well, are i think and, jeremy genuinely feels that way about his opinion <laughs> most of the time <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not gonna get was, i mean was, come, you know, on. come on but uh but yeah no i one of my uh things i've been trying to do better at too is um and you guys were great at this because i I'll, I'll never forget Go, when when I was down there or up there, um, I remember feeling like I was such in a hurry, and you guys were like, "Yo, man, just calm down, like chill out, like <laughs> we got time, we got time, we're fine." And uh, and so I always laugh about that, but because um, you're right, we gave you to... we gave you a pack of candy cigarettes and said, "Go outside and calm down." <laughs> <laughs> that's a great visual i love that um, but you guys in the, the thing i love that you guys do is you try things and what, recently i was listening to an interview with uh, rick rubin and uh he, they, he was talking about creative ideas and he said i learned that um i if, if somebody has an idea we at least try it because nine times out of ten either you do it and it stinks and everybody knows in the room like this is, even the person who requested it is like yeah this is not a good idea or two it's like oh wow this is actually a great idea let's use it but he's like i've learned that artists aren't very good at explaining their ideas so they have to just do it and um, mm -hmm. and so i've learned like what's you know because in america we can get in a rush you know and so it's like i oh, don't have time um but it's like well you never know you never know what can come from just letting somebody try something um, and I think you guys, from my experience, have done a great job with that as well, of just letting people flesh things out. And if it doesn't work, it's, you know, it's, hey, calm down. We got time. We got time. There's no we got time. Rush. Yeah. And so I, that made a huge impact on my life because, you know, um, good, bad, or indifferent sometimes in the world, it's like, oh, we got to – efficiency wins mm -hmm. sometimes. And yeah. Efficiency is king. And I think with – uh, there's a balance, obviously, uh, but with the artistic world, there is a beauty of just sitting and resting in things and um, and not just pushing just to be done, uh, but to really mm. let things breathe. And so, I mean, the, it's that. totally the, it's totally the same way with a, like a head pastor. Like you can't work for a head pastor that wants you to do it the way he thinks you should do it. Mm. You know, like he should have enough sense to go, "Hey, I trust you. That God has placed you where you are, and that you know." I'm going to let you do what you do. Not that you're not influenced by his vision and where he wants to go with things, but you hear so many horror stories of like, I mean, I've worked with pastors that have done that to me and they're not even musicians. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't tell you how to write a sermon, you know, like yeah. you got to trust me a little bit here, buddy. Oh, you know? Yeah. And I think Absolutely. that it, that's the same thing in production. It's like, there, there has to be a trust element of like, you're in the room cause you have something to, to offer. You know, and no, I think, absolutely. yeah, you know, I think that value is super important, you know. Yeah, I really hope Ben's writing this down actually right now. Really. Taking notes right yeah. now. <laughs> He's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's really good. It's true. Yeah, it's, that's awesome. There's, and that's, I think that's just something that uh, worship leaders, uh, artistic people anywhere can take as, because uh, there is, it's in the world, there's this feeling of like, I've got to be the best person in the room all the time. And I think that can quench creativity and artistry and quench 
um, what other people can offer sometimes. And, um, and so I think, uh, that's just a huge lesson to, to learn and to get better at for all of us is to say, you know, if we, if we can say, let's all work on this together and, and figure out the best possible solution, um, it actually is pretty awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Well, appreciate you guys so much. This has been an awesome conversation. Yes. Chris and I know has to get his daughter. He's, he's got to go get his kiddo. Real right. life. That's real life. In real right life. There. Real life. <laughs> uh, so got to right. get a haircut. Yep. <laughs> one, one thing I, uh, I thought it'd be cool to mention is uh, for you guys, uh, what what if people were to want to check out what you guys are doing, where would you send them? What are the best places for people to to go to? Um, well, you can find us on on the inter on the interwebs, uh, oldbearrecords.com. We're on Instagram, uh, Facebook. You know, uh, one thing we're not super good at is is social media, but we're we're getting there. You know, that's the uh, it's always the that's always the challenge. Uh, but we're but yeah, those are some those are some easy places to find yeah. us and kind of get an idea of what we got going on for yeah. sure. You also have um, a Patreon page. Did you want to mention that? Yeah. Yep. We do. Um, Patreon dot com backslash Old Bear Records, yeah. and uh, we have a lot of really cool, you know, kind of tiers. Thank you, Ben, for supporting oh, us and absolutely yeah, appreciate I, say, that. I think yeah. somebody got a free or some kind of deal on a sweatshirt recently i got yeah. a deal yeah. Yeah. yes i got a, I got got a deal patreon he, exclusive he discount in. he came with a sweatshirt on i was like where did you get that he's like oh, i'm a patreon supporter <laughs> yeah oh, <that's> cool. <laughs> i like to throw that around every once in a while that's right that's right <gasps> yeah it's uh it's a i wore it on stage this weekend i was telling you guys beforehand uh yeah it's a mm. fabulous hoodie yeah great material everyone was jealous so so, yeah. Uh, so there's some tension only on the, the finest. Stage. Only the finest. That's right. <laughs> only the finest cloth. Only the finest of buffalo a, hairs. Yeah. Only the finest cloth can be adorned by Ben. <laughs> 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 Nothing touches the skin of satin. <laughs> this is getting real weird. I'm trying to end this thing. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Anthony and Chris, we appreciate you guys so much, yes, and uh, thanks for taking time Thank to talk to us. And um, yeah, you guys are you guys are a huge blessing to us. Um, you have been over the past few years, yeah. and uh, yeah, can't likewise. wait to have you guys come back out. I think yeah, we need to. Get you back it's out been here. A, been a couple of years, and we got people asking, so yeah. we got to make it happen. Let's do this it. time. Well, I know. I know. Maybe. We couldn't Maybe do it for, for the you. Chiefs, Bills, uh, AFC, you know, oh, oh, right? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we know we know we couldn't get it for you last time, but this time we swear <laughs> we will get you that white tiger and nothing but red M and M's. We're so sorry. We had an intern right, try yep. to take care of that last time, and there was a few green ones, and we just want to apologize yeah. again for that. We just we were so. It was a life lesson for all of us. Yeah, we, it was we a did, lesson for we did all learn of us. a lot. That was one of those uh, group thinks that didn't go well. We should have just had one person <laughs> right, making that's decisions. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. No, Thanks for having us. You guys. Thank you guys. Thank Have you. a great day. Have a great one. Okay. Yeah, you too. See you guys. Bye. Huge thanks again to Anthony and Chris for joining us for the show, and to you for listening. Mm. Um, as we're kicking into uh, December. Yeah, Christmas is coming. Thanksgiving's so, over. Thanksgiving's done. We'll be surprised if you took a little siesta in the middle of this podcast because you maybe <laughs> ate some turkey and it's still <laughs> residing a week later. Oh, that you know? trip to fan. Yeah, nobody's above it. Mm-mm. Nobody's above it. Mm-mm. But now we are so grateful for them to just come on and share some time with us. It was awesome. Yeah, and yeah, we love those guys. They, they, um, they have poured a lot into to this church when they're out here. And mm-hmm. like I said before, they're the real deal. And so it's just fun to talk to them and just hear their hearts and what God's doing. And yeah, check out their stuff. They got a lot of different artists under Old Bear, uh, a lot of different sounds, and it, they just are doing some really awesome things. And so yeah. it's really cool to hear just the different artists and sounds they got coming out of Buffalo, New York. Yes. And uh, since we are heading into the Christmas season, um, this is the final stretch for our worship Mm. ministries. If you um, are not sure what our service times are uh, at each campus, you can go to visitgracechurch.com slash Christmas, and you will see each campus' service times. And um, if you'd like to be a part of you know helping make those services happen, you can always just go to our visitgracechurch.com website and uh, volunteer um, on there. I can't remember if it's like don't serve slash serve. I don't know. Anyway, you can uh, be a part of what we're doing there uh, as well. So uh, yeah, 
that's about it. So, as always, if you got any question marks on Planning Center, please mm. accept or decline, because that would be real fine if you did. Merry Christmas. See y'all. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to the GC Collaborative Podcast. If you have any questions or would like more information, check us out at visitgracechurch.com.